Hi, my name is Kara, and it has been nine weeks since I updated you on what I've been knitting. It has been a while. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, I've been pretty busy. I had my brother's wedding, I went home to LA, I went back to LA, I've just been working at my job, like my software engineering job has been picking up because I've been, I was moved to a new team and then I finally started getting into the groove of things so I started writing more code and taking on more projects. I've also been looking for apartments and let me tell you, the New York apartment search is chaos. Like I would do one of those videos of like how I started apartment hunting but Honestly, it moved so quickly and it was just so disorienting that I didn't really get good footage. If you want tips for me, I'll give you some tips. Um, here are my New York apartment searching tips. One is if you can tour it, get somebody to tour it, please do, especially if they're like a native New Yorker, if you've been in the city, it's way better to do tours in person because then you can get the sense of the street, the neighborhood, the actual hallways of your apartment because the inside might be really nice, but maybe the hallways smell really bad or something. Like, that's kind of the case of this apartment now that I'm in. When it gets hot, it smells really gross, and the neighborhood's not that great. Like, I thought that, you know, the whole meme was, there's a bunch of rats in New York. Like, that's normal, but I think that my neighborhood has particularly more rats because this is kind of gross and graphic, but when I walk outside, I can see, like, a bunch of smashed rats on the street. And you can't really see that in other neighborhoods of New York as far as I know, but in my neighborhood that's totally normal. Like I can at least usually see like at least three. And I got back from the airport recently at like 3 a.m. and there was like at least 10 rats just running around the streets. It was crazy because there weren't enough people to like kind of scare them off and like I guess keep them in like the basements, but it was really scary. It was definitely their city. I know there's that TikTok audio where it's like, this is our city, not theirs. This is their city. The rats own this city. But I think that it's also really important to kind of prioritize just living by your friends or your work because I love the public transit system of New York like, a lot because you can pretty much get to anywhere, at least in Manhattan, but doing a transfer just kind of takes a toll on you over time. And I only ever went into work like twice a week. And I usually like did stuff like I got dinner or go around other places, but it takes its toll. And I'm moving to a new place that'll be pretty close to my work, so I'll be able to walk, like I won't have to train or anything. So I'm really looking forward to that. So if I don't make another video for a while, it's probably because I'm moving. But maybe I'll do like a whole like debrief of this apartment and show you guys what my new apartment looks like before I like fully decorate. Look forward to that, hopefully, if I ever make it. I've been pretty bad about everything. Like I also wanted to do a video on how I did my nails because I recently ordered a bunch of gel manicure stuff off of Amazon and I got really excited about it and I didn't do a great job at the first time. It was the first time I had painted my own nails in about like two years. I was I used to be pretty good at it, but I also chose like a pretty unforgiving nail color. Like I chose one of the jelly ones. Ones. doesn't look so bad on camera but like in person it's a little lumpy because I had to do like six layers of nail polish because the jelly gel nail color is like not opaque enough so you have to do a bunch of layers and I was like just putting on the layers too thick I should have just done them thin but things to learn it also took me like an hour or like 45 minutes to fully remove my previous polish because the thing about doing your own gel manicure is that you can only do one hand at a time. Like you have to use the other hand to like work on the other hand. So you can't have them like one, like one being painted and like one like curing at the same time like you do at the salon. So things take time. But it is really nice to kind of be able to control like when you take breaks. Like if I wanted to just like text for a bit, I could just stop. Yeah, so I am going to get way better at doing my own manicures. And it seems like that might be the thing that I learned to do this summer rather than learning how to crochet or like learn how to use cotton, like everything else that I've been talking about. Life happens and I've just been getting more and more excited about getting my nails done or doing my own nails. And it's only been like about a week since I did this, but I'm really looking forward to like when I hit like the 10 days and I feel like it's reasonable for me, for me to remove it and try again. Because I'm really trying to hold myself back, but it's hard. So you might be wondering, what have I been knitting in the past nine weeks or so? Not a lot. Well, it's a it's a pretty big pile, but not as much as I would have done, say, last summer when I had no job and was just knitting all the time. I've been doing a ton of Better Day sweaters because I really like to work with mohair in the heat. Not that it's like particularly cool. It's not like cotton where it's like breathable. Like I don't think that it 
really be able to wear any of these sweaters out in the heat because I really don't like the humidity. <laughs> but I just have been getting really excited about doing all these different color combinations for the Better Day sweaters. I have been trying to convince myself to knit something besides Better Day sweaters and I just can't do it. I just got really excited last night and I started going through all my mohair and just making a bunch of different color combinations of different sweaters that I can make. So it seems like I'm going to be making a lot more Better Day sweaters for the foreseeable future. I recently came to the conclusion that I will need to do a big sweater sale too as I move, but I might just move with all my sweaters and then sell them because I think that it'll be harder for me to like sell sweaters when it's warm out. And that's totally fair. Like, Who wants to buy a thick wool sweater when it's like 90 degrees out? That's fair, but if you want deals, maybe I'll do that. Because I just kind of need to clear out my closet so that I don't move with a giant pile of sweaters and then as the year goes on, just continues to add to that pile. Because that's what I did when I moved to New York. I moved with exactly one sweater and it was my To Be So Lonely sweater. That's pretty much all I brought. And the pile has grown higher and higher. And I need to get that pile down, down, down because I want to keep on knitting more and I just, I can't knit more if I don't have space to store it after. And let me just do a side note, um, I have recently been watching a bit of TikTok and I got a TikTok shop ad for the Maddie Stitches like National Park embroidered sweatshirts and I really like it. I got it pretty oversized, this is a 2XL, but I'm also sharing it with my boyfriend so, well I technically got it for him, but kind of got it for myself, like it's in my possession right now, not his. Anyways really like it it's really soft watch out for the drop thank you tiktok shop ads i'm trying not to buy too much off of them but who knows so without further ado let's get into it i have been knitting as i said a ton of better day sweaters how many you might ask i have one two three four five six i have six better day sweaters here so i'm only going to talk about say the color combinations kara why have you been knitting so many because I like working with mohair, they're knit in the round, and I love a big striped sweater. I can't say that enough, I love a big striped sweater. So I've done a little bit more experimentation with these. I did, this one was I think the first one in the series. I made this one back in May when I went back home, and it's just like a nice green and white sweater. It's a medium, I think. Yeah, and this is kind of what started the the big craze for me because after that I was like oh I have a ton of mohair let me just go through and make a bunch of different color combinations and just knit them because you can also make a better day sweater with like an odd amount of yarn like I'll have like three skeins of the Erin Waite mohair and I'll be like what do I do with this because, yeah I don't think it's enough to like knit a sweater on like eight millimeter needles but if you hold a double and you have another three skeins of the Erin Waite mohair you can make an entire sweater with super chunky needles and it just comes out in a way that I love. Yeah, so this is the first one. This is Wool in the Gang Take Care Mohair in Winter White in Hip Knit Shop Fluff Yarn in Green, Spring Green, Jelly Bean Green, Jelly Bean Green, that's right. Yeah, great. After that, I started knitting this Better Day sweater in a fun color combination of green and purple. I made a sweater about two years ago that was also striped that was purple and green and it was a test knit for the for ash and her knits i really love that color combination i don't know what happened to that sweater i think i might have given it to my sister it's a good sweater i wish i had it still and i was like well i really like the purple and green combination i think it's underrated let's make one for myself both of these are romagarn tuke mohair which i think just means thick mohair and obviously both held double I now am just always on the hunt for really good Erin Waite mohairs and really fun colors because I love to knit Better Day sweaters and I don't want to ever repeat myself in a color combination. I'm totally open to doing custom orders but I'm definitely more excited if it's a novel color combination for me. Yes, I have done purple and green striped sweater before but never in mohair and never in this sweater so that's why I was able to do that here. Then I started this one, which was using some scrap yarn, because when I went home to LA, I found some old mohair, wasn't old, but like some mohair that I've completely forgotten about, and it was this pink Rico Designs Essentials mohair. It's also an Erin Waite, and I only had exactly like two skeins of it or less, 
And so I was really freaked out because I was like, oh, I would love to use this, but I don't think it's enough to really do anything. Then I was like, well, why don't I just adjust the stripe combination amounts? Instead of doing like an even amount, I started to do some thin, some thick. So this is how I came out with this kind of like preppy looking sweater. It's obviously Hip Knit Shop Fluff Yarn in Jelly Bean Green and the other yarn, as I said. I really like how the stripes turned out. The only thing was is that I ran out of yarn on the second sleeve because I miscalculated how much jelly bean green yarn I had, which wasn't the one that was limited. So I was like, this is okay. It's totally fine for me to run out because I can just order more. And so I re also recently broke my yarn buying ban because I ordered a bunch of fluff yarn from Hip Nip Shop. Just because I really like it. I really love to make all the different color combinations. And that's the only yarn purchase that I've made in the past like four months. So I'm proud of myself and I've also been really working through it and just knitting with it a bunch so I feel like it's okay that I broke the yarn buying band to do that. But I'm going to try to not order anymore for a while, at least until I get through this giant pile. And I'm making pretty good progress, but it's still like a pretty big pile. Yeah, I, obviously I did order another skein of the Jelly Bean Green so I could finish this sweater. And it turned out really cute. Then the next one I finished was this green and cream. It seems pretty preppy. Is it Dartmouth colors? Is it just like prep school general vibes? It's this really gorgeous Roma Garden Teal Mohair 314 Grown Green. Somebody asked me for the, uh, the color code, so that's why I know it. And Hip Knit Shop Fluff Yarn in Latte Lover. And I just really love how this cream green looks. Sorry, this cream looks with dark mohairs because I also did another better days for my sister-in-law I have it here I, I, I brought it and I forgot to give it to her I'm gonna give it to her soon obviously not when it's hot but it's hers and it looks really good with this like be royal blue as well and I can't decide if I, which one I like more I think maybe the green one although it this is a really nice blue but my piece of advice and what I'm gonna do in the future is I'm just going to get like a really deep rich colored mohair and just com combine it with like a cream it's gonna be really nice highly recommend so yeah this is tried and true also ran out of yarn on this one because I <laughs> I think at one point I took the cream mohair skein that I had working on this one and I just worked on another sweater that's also in this pile and then I ran out of yarn for both so I just had to that's another reason why I had to place an order for hip knit shop fluff yarn because I ran out of it for like at least two to three sweaters and just needed it. So we have the, the sweater that I stole the yarn from for one project to another. And this is a 2X sized Better Day sweater. So this is going to be pretty oversized on me, but I really like that look actually. And I think that I'm going to start to budget yarn to make larger sizes of the Better Day sweater because I think it's cute. Anyways, this is Booby Mango Mohair So Soft in Tiramisu and Latte Lover by Hip Knit Shop Fluff Yarn. It's really cute. I just finished it last night while watching a movie, but it's, believe me, it's been a work in progress for a while. <laughs> but I'm really excited for this one. I think that I'm going to make myself a better day sweater that I'm just going to keep in the fall, and it's going to be at least an XL to 2X because I really like the fit of that on myself. And I really highly recommend making oversized striped sweaters for yourself because they are cute. And then finally we have this guy, which is an XL of the Better Day sweater and it's in vanilla frost and peach. I'll put the colors in the description, but I really like this color combination because it wasn't like white or cream with a bright color. It was both like pastel-y and I just think it's a nice like subtle look. It's really soft and it just kind of reminds me of like a creamsicle ice cream. Is that the right word for that? I don't know. Really liked it. Really tempted to keep it but I think that I can get a nice like green sweater for myself but also I could just keep this one or I, I can knit myself a new one because I think at this point I'm not designing as much. I'm taking a break from that. It's not that I don't feel inspired, I just haven't had any ideas that I'm dying to make and I'd rather just knit, relax, kind of go through my stash and just do something with my hands. 
So at this point, I'm just knitting to keep myself occupied and feel productive without having to like design things all the time and like just relaxing. Taking the summer to relax, especially because it's so, so hot. Rather than force myself to figure out more summer designs, I'd rather just knit a bunch for the fall. I'm designing fall sweaters, so I'm hoping to do a pretty big drop in like late August to September. I have to figure out those patterns though, but I think I'm getting more and more in the mood for fall knitting. So speaking of fall designs, we have the Matilda sweater. This one, I actually started in like May or even earlier and I finally finished it like two days ago. I have all the yarn for it. I was just being lazy. I was on Sleeve Island. Then I was like, why am I still on Sleeve Island? This will take me like 40 minutes to finish. So I did. And this is in Wool in the Gang, Crazy Sexy Wool and Wild Mushroom. And I just really love Mock Fisherman's Rib. It just makes things look really luxurious and cushy and fluffy and like nice and soft and this is part of my drop it's technically summer drop part two i think but it'll come out beginning of august and obviously it's a winter sweater but if you're living in a climate that's a little bit colder or it just the heat doesn't last all the way through september you can start knitting this one and i really love it i told you guys last time i think that i'm obsessed with that like v-neck look of sweaters and i think i'm going to continue to explore that fit mostly because it's it's exciting for me to knit because it'll be a textured stitch. It'll be flat and in the round. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'm gonna, that's that's going to be a lot. I'm predicting a lot of that for my fall drop. A lot of the V-neck sweaters. Maybe I'll start branching out and just starting to create different fits of various stitches. Like I can do a little bit more of like a crew neck, a little bit more of like the... Um, polo look too instead of just the v-neck collared look yeah i have to look through like a department store soon and just to kind of figure out what the fall sweaters are going to look like i like to do that and just be inspired i never buy anything i haven't purchased like a machine knit sweater in a very long time but i do like to go around stores and just be like ooh, like i like that stitch i like that fit could i make it yes would it take me a long time also yes but it's fun it's good knits though This is probably one of the more weather appropriate sweaters that I've made recently. It's the To Be So Lonely sweater and it's made in Ching Fiber, Lace Surrey, Held Double, and Flying Saucer. And somebody saw this recently and was like, it's so scanty. And I was like, yes, that's true, but it's more of like a cover up. Like you don't just like wear nothing underneath it, obviously. You can, but I don't. Like I'll wear like a shirt or like a tank top underneath it. Yeah, it, this is the most weather appropriate sweater that I've made except for maybe one but I just really love the, how the stitch turned out like the soft rainbow pastel rainbowy vibes I want the weather to cool down to like 70 60 degrees before I start wearing this regularly but that'll be a lot sooner than what I could do with the rest of these sweaters I made this one pretty quickly I made it within like a week and it was for a kit collaboration I was doing with Chin Fiber because you know, I love Jing Fiber, I love the hand-dyed colors, I love the Surrey. I think that between, like, Surrey yarn versus mohair yarn, I tend to prefer Surrey just because it sheds less. Mohair tends to have more of a shine to it, but when, like, you're doing, like, the Erin weight, it doesn't even have, like, the silk in it usually to give it that shine. It's just, like, the fluffiness. Obviously, I love Surrey. And you know what? I don't know why I haven't made a Melted Baby Surrey Better Day sweater. I have a ton of random like skeins of it. I think that I just don't have a base to go with it. Because I don't think that I would do two hand-dyed colors together for the striped sweater. I think that I'd do like one hand-dyed and one like solid colored one just to kind of ground it. But I'm going to start looking through my stash and seeing what I have to see if I want to do that. Okay, this one's a little weather appropriate maybe. It's a Better Days vest. This is in Wool in the Gang Take Care Mohair in Winter White and Roma Garantioke Mohair in the Lavender color. I just thought that, you know, I haven't really been doing a bunch of sweater vests recently. I definitely should be. I haven't. I don't know how I feel about sweater vests in the summer because it's still hot. It just don't have sleeves. It's less knitting. It's still knitting. It's fun. Would I wear this out in 80 degree weather? Maybe. I don't know. But it has a nice folded collar. Unlike the other Better Day sweaters, it is knit from the bottom up. 
but it is seamless and it still has the folded collar that I love about the Better Days line, collection, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, and I would have added um, borders, but I ran out of the yarn. <laughs> And also I kind of like the look without the borders. So I've been thinking about making a second Better Days vest just to show you guys like what it looks like with arm ribbing as well. I don't know why I call it borders. It's arm ribbing. That's on my agenda and I'm probably going to have to look around and see what yarn skeins I have left. Because I think for this size it took me about two skeins of each color because I was holding it double. So I'm going to have to investigate. I'm going to have to do some investigation and sort through my yarn even more. It's gonna be really fun. I actually really love doing that. I'm gonna have to sort through my yarn and figure out which ones are gonna be allocated for like better day sweaters and which ones I'll have like extras of where I can't make a full sweater but I could make a vest. I think you guys might remember the blink of an eyelet I showed you guys last time that was in Cuttlefish. Here's the original. <laughs> This is in, I think, Kindred Red, DK, I don't remember the colorway, and like four different lace weight mohairs held with it. I was kind of intimidated by like how much color was in the DK yarn that was hand dyed. It was a beautiful rainbow cuttlefish like DK. And I just thought that I would soften it up with the holding it with a bunch of mohair. And I really liked how it turned out. I made this one maybe like two years ago, maybe a year ago, and left it behind had like one sleeve left then when I went back during winter break or for like the holidays I finished the second sleeve but I never woven at any ends and I just left it there as well so then I finally brought it home back in May woven all the ends and so I'm finally saying that I finished this sweater after like a full year and it's so nice it's kind of thick it's a good fall sweater even though it has like little holes it was just a fun experiment in really colorful hand dyed yarn and mohair and I'm really happy with how it turned out and I honestly just kept on forgetting it every time I came back to New York. Here is the Love Sick cardigan. Will also be part of my summer drop part two out in August. And I just really like it. This is part of my bobble phase. I want to make another one of these because I really like how this turned out. And it just seems really cute for the spring. It's not spring anymore, but also exciting for the fall. It seems fitting that I am releasing this one almost about like 11 months after I released the Love Six sweater version. I made that one in Feeling Good yarn held double. So it was a bulky weight yarn that was a little bit softer. It didn't have as much body as the Al Pacino Merino. This was Bull in the Gang Al Pacino Merino and Sahara Dust. So I really liked seeing how the bobbles turned out. I did the bigger bobble version for this one. I might do a smaller smaller bauble version as well. Sorry, it's almost like a tongue twister, but I don't know why. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. Yeah, I need to obviously install the buttons. I always forget to install the buttons, but I'm kind of looking for little heart buttons that I have, or just cute, colorful buttons. Choosing buttons is my least favorite part of finishing sweater, and it's often the part that I forget to finish at all. So if you consider installing buttons as essential to considering a cardigan, I guess cardigan, finished, I have not finished a lot of cardigans. Here's a piece that I have been meaning to block for a while and I haven't. <laughs> I found this nice ribbon yarn back home and it was a really interesting art yarn type and I just really liked how it looked and it seemed like a fun summer yarn that wasn't necessarily cotton but nice and breathable. Don't know what it's called, I got it at Art of Yarn. I think this is called in Woodside back when I was in school and I finally found that yarn again full year later and I started knitting with it. No idea what the skeinage was, skein, the yardage, what the yardage was because I lost the label as well. So it was just pure guesswork with this one and that's maybe why it's pretty short. That's why I'm going to block it because I want to make it a little bit longer. And I decided to kind of try to go for puff sleeves with this one. It didn't quite work and I wonder if it's a type of yarn that I decided to work with. So I think that if I managed to figure out how to like bunch it, like if I installed some elastic so that it held it up, it'd make it like a little puff sleeve. So maybe that'll be my next step before I block it is installing elastic to make it like a cute little cap sleeve. And I was also experimenting with making a mohair version of it just with a different yarn to see what it looked like. I haven't finished it yet. I haven't even divided for the sleeves, but look forward to that. Hopefully I might run out of yarn for that one because 
I definitely stole some of this peach to make it the better day sweater that I showed you earlier. That's all right. I like the look of this. It's not perfect yet, and I'm trying to figure out how to make it perfect. And I think that elastic and blocking will make it exactly what I want it to be. Here is my final project for you. It's a sky sweater that I made with Nora Ito yarn, and I don't know what the colorway is. This one I actively tried to make sure that the sleeves aligned, and I think it worked out pretty well. And I have fond memories of re-watching Kingsman series while making this sweater. It's already blocked, and yeah. I did omit the twisted stitch collar, mostly because I kind of forgot to do it. I was obviously not following my own pattern, I was just kind of going by memory, and <laughs> I completely forgot to do the collar. It might be because I forgot the six millimeter needles to pack any at all to my on my trip to LA earlier this month. So I just improvised. And I, I like the way it looks. I think that I like the way it looks with a twisted stitch collar more. But you live and you learn. Really fun color. I ordered another skein of Nora Ito immediately after. And I'm gonna be making another one soon. <laughs> And that is everything that I have to show you guys today. It seems like a lot. It isn't as much as you would think for me in nine weeks of knitting, but I've been traveling a bunch. Thank you for sticking with me and waiting patiently for this video. I'm not even gonna make a promise on what I'm gonna make one next, probably another eight weeks, because I forget, life gets busy, and I procrastinate on wanting to edit the videos. It's not so much filming that I dread. I like filming, I can do it. It's the editing. It's the editing. And I could hire an editor. But I'm lazy too. I need to do research. I <laughs> I've been trying to be less procrastinating, and it just hasn't really been working. It's a process. Maybe I will in my new apartment. Who knows? New York is also just so tempting to do other things rather than sit at home and edit YouTube videos. So please bear with me. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting me and my patterns. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and happy knitting. See ya.